The beauty of this operation is that no bones are broken. We simply work between the ribs as opposed to dividing the patient's chest to accomplish what we need. So operation begins by making a four to five centimeter incision in the right chest. We're gonna put in a soft tissue retractor. Once we get exposure to the chest. It's okay to ventilate, please. We turn our attention to the femoral arteries in the leg in order to place the patient on cardiopulmonary bypass. We're placing the wire into the superior vena cava using the echo to guide us. We place the venous cannula in. Now we'll place the arterial cannula in to complete the circuit for the heart-lung machine. Now that we're on the heart-lung machine, the lungs are no longer needed, so we can move them out of the way. And then we'll open up the pericardium here, which is the lining around the heart. We place a variety of pericardial sutures just to gain further exposure. We're gonna eventually require a drainage tube, so we'll make that hole now, and we'll utilize that for some of the things that we need. Now we're making room for our aortic cross cramp. Okay, flow normal, Cameron. Start cooling, please. Okay, super low flow, please. We're gonna take this aortic cross cramp and cross cramp the aorta to arrest the heart. So this generally takes a few minutes. So the heart should stop here fairly soon. And there it goes. We'll allow him to shrink down the heart because the heart is full of some of that medication. And as it shrinks down, then we can begin our operation. We're going to actually open the left atrium and get access to the mitral valve itself. Now we'll just go and examine the valve. That looks like it's in pretty good shape. So it looks today all we need to do is put a titanium band around this valve. But you can see we get excellent exposure of what we're trying to do. Prior to the patient's operation, we take a careful look at his imaging to decide whether his valve is repairable or requires replacement. The final determination is made at the time of the operation when we get a good look at the valve and determine the quality of the valve tissue itself. This ring will stay in there forever. We do all the work on the outside, but you can see there's really no need to open somebody's entire chest to do this. Cameron, why don't you go ahead and start rewarming CO210, please? At this point, we inject saline directly through the valve repair itself to pressurize the ventricle to ensure that there are no leaks around the valve. So now we just close up the heart and we are done. Surprisingly, through the mini thoracotomy approach, we get a direct view of the mitral valve, which is superior to the view that we can achieve when we do the traditional operation. This little blue line is a pacing wire that will help us regulate the heart rhythm after surgery, which is pretty standard. Now we go and put a needle back into the aorta from which we're going to aspirate any air that's remaining inside the heart. Now we'll remove the aorta cross clamp. Clamps off, flow back up, please. Okay, so he's got a heart rhythm back already. So Cameron, would you um, fill up the heart a little bit, please? We're gonna look and see, make sure that the repair looks adequate. You see the mitral valve there at 12 o'clock in the middle of that triangle, and you see it open, and we don't see any rainbow color going up, so it looks like it's not leaking, which is good. To um, get off the heart-lung machine, we'll have to restart the lungs and all that stuff, so his own lungs are doing some work. Cameron, flow back up, please. We uh, minimize the support of the cardiopulmonary bypass machine. Go ahead, Chuck. So we make sure that the heart can sustain uh, and maintain on its own. He's looking very stable and he's looking very good currently, so we feel very comfortable of uh, taking this stuff out. There's no rib fracture or anything. We just go completely in between. May I have um, antibiotics and then I'll take pain medicine, please? So less than an hour for the operation, an hour and a half for the whole heart lung machine and then it'll take us half an hour to close, so within two hours we'll be done. Generally it takes somewhere between four and six hours to do this operation. As you've seen here, we've accomplished this in less than an hour, meaning they're not on the heart-lung machine for a prolonged period of time. They're under anesthesia less. This guy, within the next hour, will be awake and talking to us. So it's a very quick and efficient way of doing the operation.